Boeing Starliner astronauts are now stuck in space after another delay. NASA is pushing back its return to Earth from the International Space Station after several previous postponements. NASA wants to do more checks following helium leaks and the failure of some maneuvering thrusters. Two NASA astronauts blasted off on June 5th in Starliner's first mission to orbit carrying astronauts, expecting to come back after just eight days. However, due to ongoing issues with Boeing's Starliner, their return has been delayed. With their opportunity to come home narrowing, what are their options now? Also, if you're curious about the effects of spending over a year in space on the human body, keep watching until the end. After years of setbacks, Boeing Starliner finally launched its first crewed mission from Florida's Cape Canaveral on June 5th. However, during the 25-hour journey, engineers found several issues. Five helium leaks, five malfunctioning thrusters, and a propellant valve that didn't close properly. Barry Butch Wilmore and Sunita Suni Williams, who traveled to space on this Boeing Starliner, are now stuck aboard the International Space Station, ISS. They were initially planned to stay in orbit for only eight days. NASA has already rescheduled their return three times and currently doesn't have a fixed date for it. According to an anonymous source, the latest target date for their return is July 6th. If this date holds, the astronauts will end up spending a month in space instead of just over a week. The main issues now involve Starliner's one-time use propulsion system, which is crucial for moving the capsule away from the ISS and guiding it through Earth's atmosphere. According to Steve Stitch, NASA's commercial crew manager, many of Starliner's thrusters have overheated during use. Additionally, the helium leaks, which are essential for pressurizing the thrusters, seem to be linked to how often the thrusters are activated. So what are Butch and Suni up to while they're in space? The return module of the Starliner spacecraft is currently attached to the ISS's Harmony module, while NASA and Boeing engineers work on addressing the critical hardware problems. Butch, the Starliner commander, and Suni, the first female test pilot of an orbital spacecraft, spent a day inside the spacecraft ensuring that the plumbing systems are functioning correctly. According to NASA's ISS blog, they also replaced the pressure control and pump assembly motor, which is essential for the main restroom on the space station. A couple of days later, they spent another day testing various systems within the Starliner spacecraft. How else can they get back to Earth? After running the thrusters on June 15th, engineers noticed that many of the issues seem to be at least partly fixed, but the exact causes are still unknown. However, the Harmony module has limited fuel, meaning Starliner can only remain docked for 45 days. This makes the window for a safe return flight tighter, but if absolutely necessary, it could stay docked for up to 72 days using backup systems. If Starliner can't safely bring the astronauts back, one option would be to return them on SpaceX's Crew Dragon, which brought four astronauts to the station in March and can accommodate more people in an emergency. While this scenario is unlikely and would be embarrassing for Boeing, NASA and Boeing officials, along with engineers familiar with the situation, have said there's no indication that this will be needed. But why is their mission so important? The Starliner capsule is a crucial alternative to SpaceX's Crew Dragon, which is currently the only spacecraft transporting astronauts from the US, Europe, Canada, and Japan to the ISS. In 2014, NASA contracted both SpaceX and Boeing to create a commercial crew capsule. While SpaceX began successfully sending astronauts in 2020, Boeing has faced numerous setbacks. Starliner's first uncrewed test flight in 2019 failed due to a software error that sent it into the wrong orbit. A second attempt was postponed because of a fuel valve issue. Further reviews last year led to fixing problems with the capsule's parachutes and removing about a mile, 1.6 kilometers, of flammable tape. This mission marks Boeing's third attempt to send a crew to the ISS. The first two attempts were halted by a vibrating oxygen valve on the United Launch Alliance's Atlas V rocket developed by Lockheed Martin and a computer glitch in a ground launch sequencer. Boeing's Starliner program has incurred losses estimated at $1.5 billion. 
Okay, now suppose these astronauts get stranded on ISS for more than a year, then what could happen? If that happens, their bodies could undergo significant changes due to the prolonged period in space. The current record for the longest single trip by an American astronaut stands at 371 days, held by NASA's Frank Rubio. Last year, Rubio returned to Earth after spending 371 days on the ISS, surpassing the previous US record of 355 days. Rubio's extended stay was due to a coolant leak in the spacecraft that was supposed to bring him and his crewmates home. This delay allowed him to complete 5,963 orbits around Earth, covering a distance of 157.4 million miles, 253.3 million kilometers. Despite this impressive feat, he still fell short of the longest ever spaceflight by a human, 437 days, a record set by Russian cosmonaut Valery Polyakov on the Mir space station in the mid-1990s. Spending over a year in the low gravity of the ISS can have several surprising effects on an astronaut's body. It can alter their muscles, brains, and even gut bacteria. Muscles can weaken and lose mass because they aren't used as much in microgravity. The brain can also change, potentially affecting vision and cognitive function. Additionally, the balance of bacteria in the gut can shift, which might impact overall health. So what actually happens to the body during such an extended stay in space? Astronauts like Frank Rubio have experienced these effects firsthand, providing valuable insights into the physical and physiological challenges of long-duration spaceflight. Without the constant pull of gravity, our muscles and bones start to weaken quickly in space. The muscles most affected are those that maintain our posture, like those in the back, neck, calves, and quadriceps. In microgravity, these muscles don't have to work as hard and start to shrink. In just two weeks, muscle mass can decrease by up to 20%, and on missions lasting three to six months, it can drop by 30%. Similarly, astronauts' bones begin to lose strength because they aren't subjected to the same mechanical strain as they are on Earth. In space, astronauts can lose one to 2% of their bone mass each month and up to 10% over six months. For comparison, older adults on Earth lose bone mass at a rate of zero, five to 1% per year. This bone loss increases the risk of fractures and lengthens healing times. After returning to Earth, it can take up to four years for an astronaut's bone mass to return to normal. Even though weight isn't much of a factor in orbit, since the microgravity environment allows anything not secured to float freely, including human bodies, keeping a healthy weight in space is challenging. NASA works to provide astronauts with a variety of nutritious foods, and they've even managed to grow a few salad leaves on the space station. Despite these efforts, space travel still impacts an astronaut's body. For instance, NASA astronaut Scott Kelly who spent 340 days on the ISS while his twin brother remained on Earth, lost 7% of his body mass during his mission. On Earth, gravity helps pull blood downwards while the heart pumps it back up. In space, this process gets disrupted, although the body does adjust to some extent. In microgravity, blood tends to accumulate more in the head, which can cause fluid to pool at the back of the eyes and around the optic nerve, leading to swelling, edema. This can affect vision, reducing sharpness, and causing structural changes in the eyes. These changes can begin after just two weeks in space, and the risk increases the longer an astronaut stays in orbit. Some vision changes reverse within about a year after returning to Earth, but others can be permanent. After his extended stay on the ISS, Kelly's cognitive abilities remained largely unchanged compared to his brothers on Earth. Thanks for sticking with us until the end, and I'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe and goodbye.